The Lost Woman by Patricia Beer is a poem that deals with the relationship between a mother and her daughter and takes us through the stages of grief that the daughter feels and we learn by the end of the poem who the lost woman really is. The voice of the poem is in the first person and she, Patricia Beer, narrates what happened when her mother died. She says that her mother left without saying goodbye. She says how she left with no more warning than a bright voice and a bad pain. She describes the moment when the ambulance took her and that moment when she died when she was never going to come back. Now the word shocking here indicates what the poet herself was feeling. The poet was feeling shocked um, and interestingly the colour white is a colour that is used in some cultures to indicate death. So it is no coincidence that the word white has been mentioned. Now we know ambulances are white, but this word could of course be left out. The fact that it's mentioned, it indicates that there was a death which is related in the first stanza. And it is not only the ambulance drawing away from the gates, but also in a way it's also the mother's soul. Now, it is interesting that the poet mentions how it was a June morning. And how she'd come home from school. So the poet was at the time quite young. And she'd just come home. It was June, so springtime. And she saw her mother being taken away in an ambulance with no other explanation. Now in this first stanza we do get a reference to nature because there is a brook and this is where we get the first instance of nature becoming associated with death and with the mother. So we have here nature almost becoming synonymous with death and with the mother. The first line of the second stanza tells us that the child has never spoken or seen her mother after she was taken away by the ambulance. We read how she never returned and I never saw her buried. She didn't see her mother's burial. And this of course means that she's dead. Perhaps we can say because she didn't see her mother buried, there was for her, in a way, no closure. The fact that she never saw her mother buried meant that she was not really able to properly move on. Now it's difficult enough to deal with a parent's death, but when a parent has died and a person has not properly grieved, then this is when you can say the person has not really accepted the other person's death. Now we then read how a romance began. So in a way this is when the poet in a way refused to let her mother go. Now when I say she refused to let her mother go, what I mean is she refused to let go of her mother's memory. Instead, she started to romanticize, she started to romance the idea and keep the idea in her mind and idealize it. Instead, rather than let her mother go, and the ivy mother turned into a tree. What this mean what this means is that she caused her mother's memory to become a tree. And she let this tree grow. 
and we read how my tendrils are the ones that clutch and it is her who's clutching onto her mother's memory refusing to let her go instead she's allowed this memory of her mother to turn into an ivy tree and as we know an ivy tree spirals upwards clinging onto everything refusing to let go and it's particularly important that we have an ivy tree being mentioned here because an ivy tree clings and we have this word over here as well clutch because an ivy tree clings and clutches it refuses to let go and this is what we have here she's refusing to let go of her mother's memory instead she's clinging on to it the third stanza shows how the mother and the daughter had a very close relationship she describes how i made a life for her over the years she was frustrated by more no more by a dull marriage she ran a canteen through several wars so here we get this idea that not only were the mother and the daughter close but she also helped her mother a lot now it is worth noting that this is all from the perspective of the daughter we haven't heard from the mother yet this is all the daughter explaining to us how she's almost sacrificed a great deal for her mother not in a way of rubbing it in her face because she's dead but telling us of the favors that she's done for her mother now of this phrase she ran a canteen through several wars we could perhaps say that her canteen perhaps um faced several difficulties just like her marriage so she faced difficulties at work and difficulties in her marriage as well so those difficulties both ways both at work and also in her marriage as well so what she did as a way of distracting herself she started to learn how to paint through extramural classes and the open university summer school so these were for the mother distractions the main gist of this uh, stanza is that this is the narrator telling us of how much she's helped and sacrificed for her mother and how she's helped her through the dull marriage helped her through the difficulties in her workplace uh, which was of course a canteen we then move on to the next stanza now in the fourth stanza the narrator says that everybody has lost a woman at one point in our lives that woman could be someone that we knew all our lives like a mother or a grandmother or it could be someone that we barely know here the readers are invited to imagine the feeling of losing a woman such as a sister or a girlfriend while simultaneously making them realize that they don't just haunt the home but they haunt the person's life as well uh, the idea of many a hero in his time and every poet has acquired a lost woman to haunt the home the idea of haunting shows that the person's memory does not really leave rather it stays to plague the person who's lost the woman to be compensated and desired who will not alter as in who will not change who will not grow beyond the memory and it becomes a corpse they need never get to know so this is almost in a way explaining to us the burden of losing a woman the memory remains and the memory remains intact the person in your memory does not age they do not grow they stay exactly as they were in your memory we then move on to the next stanza now here the narrator explains her imaginations and feelings about her mother we can see how after a long time the mother is still in the narrator's thoughts the narrator says how she's nearly always benign and of course we know that benign means loving and kind in her memory 
As we know, parents um, may chastise us here and there, but in terms of our memories, we only remember the good. She, she's nearly always benign. Her habit is not to stride at dead of night. She's soft and precapsular in rabbits, light she comes out. Hear how they hate themselves for losing her as they did. Her country is bland and she does not chide. In a way, by saying this, how she doesn't chide, how she's benign. So what, this, what we understand here is that she does not um, chastise or chide. She's loving. The poet here is in a way idealizing her. And this is what happens when you keep you know, keeping a person's memory in your mind, uh, especially when it becomes the memory of a parent, you keep the ideal. And this is what the poet has done. The poet's idealizing the mother and only remembering the good. Now, what is perhaps, I think, the most interesting stanza in the poem is the last. Because this final paragraph here contradicts all the ideas created by the reader. Instead, here, the truth is revealed. This is the mother talking. The mother says how you do not love me, I sacrificed too much perhaps. I showed you the way to rise above me and you took it. You are the ghost with the bat voice, my dear. I am not lost. The mother's saying that perhaps she sacrificed so much that the narrator never really knew that her mother would eventually die and that she would be without her. In this last stanza, the dead mother talks to the daughter saying that she is not the lost woman, that the daughter is the lost one because she feels like she couldn't live without her mother. All the self-pitying that we've had before this is now contradicted and countered here. The mother is saying, to move on, really. The mother is telling her daughter to move on. She's saying, if, if you do not move, then it's not me that's lost, it is you who are lost. I am not lost. She says how I showed you the way to rise above me and you took it. You are the ghost with the bat voice. You did not love me. So the mother is almost contradicting everything the daughter has told us. But the main message the mother seems to be giving away here is this idea of moving on. She's saying, I showed you the way to rise above me. But unless you move on, you will be lost. I am not the woman who is lost. It is you. So, as we mentioned, in this third stanza, the real truth is revealed. The real lost woman is revealed. And it is not the mother. She's just passed on. It is the daughter because she's unable and perhaps unwilling to move on beyond the memory of her mother, which she has idealized.